this is a, uh, this is an interesting one because it's like, do we need black people on our on our banknotes, British banknotes? That is, it's like I don't know. Do we? Do we need anyone on them? But the point is, is is that if if you look at the difference between British and say American history, because I know we get very much Americanized, we just seem to follow suit. You know, we in Britain we don't really have. Um, um, a rich black history because it hasn't existed for as long as it has in America like prominently we've had black people here for a long time um, the black communities here for like 200 years I know of um, because when as a slave if you I think it was if you if you set foot on British soil you know if you managed to escape because because the ports of Liverpool and Bristol is where they sort of uh, kept slaves before they shipped them over to America but if you managed to get away you were a free person because slavery was was outlawed in the UK it was just one of them one of them loophole type situations and uh, I believe there was a, a, a for the first black communities were set up around uh, near Liverpool like 200 years ago if, I'm, if I remember correctly um, but no one prominent came from it not like in America where you have you know Harriet Tugman or Martin Luther King or Malcolm X you know there's there's three big ones for you already just off the top of my head I ain't American I don't study American history and, but, but in the UK who have we got I mean who have we actually got that's worthy of putting on a banknote that's what you got to ask yourself like what what is what constitutes being put on a banknote so then it, it, it falls down to a, a situation where it's like oh well where the diversity thing has just gone so it's going a bit mad at the moment, and it's like, oh my god, we need we need more. Oh, we need more black people on TV. We need more Asians on TV because because oh my god, because why? Because everyone's angry, or well, whatever it is, whatever the reason, you know, forced diversity type situation. And it's like, oh, we need to have black people on banknotes. It's like, all right, but just put people on the banknotes who have mer who merit have the merit to be on there in the first place. There's your answer, I think. Is is essentially that's why you get put on a banknote. I know there's some sort of outcries about. Something to do with women being on back notes years ago. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was absolutely stupid. But you know, we've had women for as long as we've had men, so that's ridiculous. But like, you got to honestly ask yourselves, going, who, who, what prominent black people have we had in the UK um, that have done something of such merit that they should be on a banknote? Like, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think because it's just we haven't got a long enough history essentially you know majority of black people that came that are in this country right now you know um, you know most people start coming over in the 50s and 60s it's not a long time to make you know, a huge impact I mean some people can make a huge impact in a very short amount of time but it just hasn't happened you know what I mean it, it, who we actually got I, I can't think there's only like celebrities and entertainers the only people sort of like if you talk about someone who's an activist or something I'm going to think of like Darkest Brown and he's just a nutter <laughs> you don't want him on a bank <laughs> plus he's still alive um, I know like the Queen's still alive and blah 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 but usually it's like dead people that are on the back of the bank no? it's like really I mean is it that important that you want to have uh, you know a black person shoved up every banker's nose while they snort cocaine I mean is, is that is it that important I don't know. Let's see what she has to say. Maybe she knows more than me. I hesitated before supporting the campaign for representation, <clears throat> but the Bank of England's feeble response convinced me it's needed. Right, okay. Usually when a new campaign to rectify our national failures to acknowledge black ingenuity in building world in Britain comes along, I support it enthusiastically. I've backed the critique of our statues, for example, which promote white supremacists as heroes and ignore public people of colour. <clears throat> Let's not even get into that one. And of our curriculum, which promotes ignorance about the radicalised nature of British history. Uh, let's not get into that debate, neither. I've seen the need for a museum of empire and the importance of books such as Washington Black, which told the fictional story of black inventor erased from the historical record. Which told a fictional story of a black woman. Right, okay. But when I asked to add my name to a petition calling for a black person to be the face of the new £50 banknote, a decision expected by the Bank of England this summer, I was hesitant. Not because I have any doubt about the strength of the argument. There have been 24 banknotes featuring a notable person since the first was issued in 1970. All have been white and only three have been women. 
The last of these, Jane Austen, was chosen only after an extensive social media campaign and the threat of litigation. Ah, it was the Jane Austen thing. Uh, that's what happened. I knew something happened. The campaign for black notes of colour makes an excellent case. Black and ethnic minority uh, people have been in Britain for millennia, and yet their contributions have been systematically overlooked. For a millennia? Well, that'd be many. I don't know what you're talking about. Born into slavery, Oluwada Equiano's phenomenal campaigning for abolition has been buried under the preferred memory of William Wilberforce. Ebbets to introduce British people to Mary Seacole, the black nurse of the Crimean War, are still speared as a PC myth in favour uh, of her contemporary Florence Nightingale, whose own controversies are, bit, are rarely mentioned. In fact, during centuries when Britain regarded black people as an inferior species, we can assume that those who gained enduring recognition had to be all the more remarkable to overcome the odds stacked against them. Fair point. The question for me is not whether black people deserve to be on the money, but whether the money deserves us. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this is the argument you're going with. In the US, when the giant of the Underground Railroad, Harriet Tubman, was announced as the face of the new $20 note, the first woman an African American to be commemorated on the currency, some voiced unease about the image of a woman who was enslaved for being placed next to the price of a bill. That unease stems from a rational distrust of American capitalism, which is yet to fully acknowledge yeah, alone begins. Oh God! Now this has just turned into a, like an anti-capitalist debate. Oh, for fuck's sake! Can you just leave it alone? Can you tell us about some prominent black people, please? I'm not even reading that bit. It's just like, oh, I don't know. It's just oh, cool. It's a Guardian article. It's going to come from some weird place, isn't it? The inherent link between racism and capitalism has been well documented. Hegel and Nietzsche saw how existent essential the exploitation of so-called inferior people would be to European growth. Former said a civilized nation understands that the rights of the barbarians are unequal to its own and treats their autonomy as only a formality. In the UK, the Bank of England both emerged from and presided over a system that com commoditized black people, enabling Brit uh, Britain's historic economic growth. Okay. All right. So let's say fuck capitalism and go back to, you know, where it's just t tyranny and imperialism. <laughs> the Romans. Remember the Romans and what they were like? Oh, never mind. That's a debate for another time as well. Four Bank of England governors and directors own slaves, slave ships or plantations, or were chairman. Yes, everyone owns... Can we just get over the fact that, like, everyone owns slaves at some point. Everyone enslaved people for history. Like, white British were enslaved many times by many different conquerors, all right? Over his history is full of slavery. And do you know what got rid of slavery in part? Do you know why we don't have slavery anymore? Well, capitalism is pretty good for anti... It's pretty good. It's something that... <laughs> do you know? Like, capitalism, you know? Not much need for slavery. A capitalist society, do you know? Do you know about all that? Anyway, so we have a socialist on our hands here. As long as we still use that system, we must relentlessly acknowledge that history. In the end, I joined 150,000 others who added their names to the banknotes of colour campaign, and the importance of this movement was driven home by the response of the Bank of England itself. In contrast to other nations such as Canada and New Zealand, which have an ethnic minority figures on their currency, the bank barely even confronted the request over the new £50 note. Instead of deflecting questions of race, onto the need to recognize military service and science, both of which have already been reflected on our banknotes for decades. Like many other British institutions, the Bank of England talks a good game when it comes to diversity. I have been to speak there myself, while the governor, Mark Carney, and other senior figures nodded in earnestly at my words about history and how it affects all of our racial identities. Yet instead of taking this campaign seriously, it seems to be taking stance closer to President Trump's whose administration has delayed the date of the new Harriet Tubman bills initially planned for 2020 under Barack Obama to 2028, which looks a lot like kicking it into a, the long grass, including, well, that's a pity. You don't know why. I don't know why. Do you? Including black figures on banknotes can resolve our real problems of racial injustice. But the refusal... Oh, come on, you're going with... No, it's not. It's not going to do anything. Look at... See you know what I mean? This, this kind of thing is like, how much importance you place on this kind of thing. I don't think it's that important. It's like, it's in the, like, can we look at the bigger picture of stuff that putting 
just crowbarring in some black people on a banknote isn't going to solve anything. I, I don't think it solves anything. I don't think what was it. What does it gain? It, it acknowledges people from history. Okay, that they were there. All right, all right. But I don't like. But like, does what, does it does it end racism? What, what does it do? I, it, I struggle to see what it does. Do you know what I'm saying? Having a black superhero, right? That young black people can look up to and identify with is more beneficial and important than having black people on a banknote the way I see it do you know what I mean it's, it's more inspiring than that which is a weird thing to, to think which is kind of weird what, uh, something as, as frivolous as, as, a, as a, a superhero can have more benefits for, for young people and future generations than just seeing someone on a banknote and, oh who's that like, oh, do you know this person achieved this? You can achieve it too. No, you can all achieve it. Isn't it? It's like, do you think? Do you think people are going to see a prominent black figure on a, a banknote? Like, white people don't look at like a banknote, and like, no one sees Florence Night, not Nightingale and goes, "Oh, I could be, I can do whatever I, I can be whatever I want to be, including a Crimean war nurse." Like, I don't, I just, I think we place way too much need and way too much energy into campaigning for all this meaningless stuff I think I don't think it's it's like I said if there is like you could you could have you know you've, you've taken this piece an interesting subject right you could have spent this whole thing telling us about great things that people have supposedly been written out of history from you know people have been erased or ignored by history books because of um, racial attitudes of the past and you could have told us all about them but no, you used it as a tirade against capitalism like come on like you used this for your own political agenda of your own like I'm assuming you're some sort of nutter <laughs> some sort of socialist like uh, just use it to bash capitalism like one of the best systems we got like that's what you decided to do it's shameful Really, isn't that kind of shameful that you just you you take this? You know, you, you, what shameless opportunism this is to use a, a racially charged issue and use it as a as an opportunity to bash capitalism. The same same thing that they'd be doing with climate change, an existential crisis that could eliminate humankind, and they've just used it as a way to attack capitalism and push forward a socialist agenda. Like, what what is wrong with you people? Stop it! We did stop it. You know? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. You're ridiculous. Just, just pipe down, would you? My goodness. So who have we got? Who has she even mentioned? Mary Seacole. You could have a link there so we could all learn about Mary Seacole, the black nurse of the crime we have. Um, you know, who's this? Should we, look, should we actually... Can I copy and paste from the, from the, from the Guardian or will it take me into the deeper dark? Because I can't. I just... just, just it's not a name I can remember. Who's this then? I'll tell you about them, shall I? I'll d don't worry, I'll do it. Uh, yeah, all right. Looks like she didn't even spell the name right either. <laughs> oh, good one. Um, so who is she? Or is it he? Was it? I don't know. Sorry, it's it's a dude. Is it a dude? Apology. Born in slavery for normal campaign has been buried under. It's a dude, right? Uh, known in his lifetime as Gustavus Vassa. See, I can read that one. Was a writer and abolitionist from Ihiala, which is the uh, Igbo region of what is t um, today southeastern Nigeria, according to his memoir, or from South Carolina, according to other sources. Enslaved as a child, he was taken to the Anglo-Caribbean, British West Indies and sold as a slave captain to the Royal Navy and later the Quake trade. Alright, so he did live in Britain at some point. He's not British though, is it? <laughs> as a freed man in London, he supported the British abolitionist movement. Econo had a stressful life. He had suffered suicidal thoughts before he became a Protestant Christian. 
after settling in London, Lepiano married an English woman named Susanna Cullen in 1792, and they had two daughters who died in 1796 in Middlesex. Cullen's death was recognised in American as well as British newspapers. Plaques commemorating his life have been placed at buildings where he lived in London. Since the late 20th century, when his autobiography was published in a new edition, he has been increasingly studied by a range of scholars, including those from his homeland, <coughs> Igbo land, in the eastern part of uh, Nigeria. Okay. Freedom. So, so he's a pioneer of the abolitionist movement. That's who he was. Okay. All right. You know, you could have told us a bit more about who it was. But you just given the names of two prominent, like uh, two black people who like did something. And what about this other person? Where they are? Where they are? Where they are? Where they are? Who's this? <clears throat> Mary Seacole. How about Mary Seacole? Eh? Let's read about her. Let's see how prominent. Let's see what Mary did. What did Mary get up to? Mary Seacole. Mary Jane Seagull was a British Jamaican businesswoman and nurse who, uh, who set up the British hotel behind the lines during the Crimean War. Right. She described this as a mess table and comfortable quarters for sick and convalescent officers and provided succour for wounded servicemen on the battlefield. Coming from a tradition of Jamaican and West African doctresses, Seacole used herbal remedies to nurse soldiers back to health. She was posthumously awarded the Jamaican Order of Merit in 1991. In 2004, she was voted the greatest black Britain. Okay, well there you go. Put her on the 50 pound note. She was voted the best, greatest black Britain. Fine. Why not Fine, good, okay. She done something, she probably did more than, Flo you know, Florence Nightingale, probably about the same amount of work, maybe did more, along with Florence Nightingale. So, she was one of the two outstanding nurses to tend to the wounded, along with Florence Nightingale. Now Florence Nightingale was obviously written in history, blah, blah, blah. All right, we'll put her on it. End of discussion. You know, let's not let's not throw the toys out of the pram and end capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Problem is, you, I've seen. I, I'll tell you why some of this stuff gets real problematic. I said, you know, I've seen a, a Buzz video, Buzzfeed video uh, debunked where they <clears throat> these two journalists have to spend a day where they can't use any inventions that were invented by black people and, and they basically totally twisted history and kind of lied a bit and, and you know said that all these things were invented by black people and most of them just weren't or like they had a bit part or they were one of ten people that did it do you know what I'm saying <clears throat> it's sort of a very big twisted thing um, same with like the um, the cheddar man that they found um, you know, that 30,000 year old corpse they said was black and the headline was we were all immigrants that was very much manipulated as well um, so we've had a, we've had a bit of this recently of this forced diversity sort of stuff saying oh look at these things that have happened that haven't actually happened thinking that it's uh, thinking that it's benefits for the greater good by lying to us it's like no that's never ever a good idea okay so that's it that's why you get a bit of um, you know this is why she says here, uh, uh, what does it say, you know, efforts to introduce British people to Mary Seacole, the black nurse of the Crimean War, are still smeared as a PC myth in favour of a contemporary. Well, I don't know, I haven't seen any, I haven't seen anything that says that, because I haven't looked. <clears throat> whatever, whatever, but we've had some PC myths inflicted on us recently, a lot of them, unfortunately, and it doesn't benefit anybody. Uh, it just creates more division, but that's what people want. They want us to be divided. If you didn't already know, divide and conquer. Have you ever read Machiavelli? Hmm? Have you ever read the Forty Eight Laws of Power? Yeah. Read some books. Don't read Buzzfeed or The Guardian. Read some books, like, and then you actually know what the hell's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a bit of conspiracy nutcase shit for you, but like, come on, man. Yeah. You know, could have, could have, you could have sold us the case. I had to go look this woman up, you know. You could have told us. You could have done something really good here, but you couldn't. You just couldn't do it because you write for The Guardian. And that's not what you want to do, is it? Don't want to enrich our lives. No, I just want to beat us over the head with nonsense. Thanks for that. Appreciate it.